What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp here of Fightful. We got a name you know. We didn't get to see her in Dallas. It was so sad that I did not get to see her in Dallas. But you know what? We got her right here, and we're going we're gonna to match up sometime. We've got Alicia Atute, the newly re-signed Alicia Atute. How you doing? Yes. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like I've been spinning a lot of D12 lately. I'm prepared for this interview and we're going to we're going to rock and roll as you're, long as you don't get too in depth. We'll, we'll be OK. You're relaxed. <laughs> you are cool, calm, just like my mom with a couple of volume inside her palm. That's what it's what you are. And you've got a new contract now. You know that I poke around the internet very often. Oh, and I'm like, whose deals are coming up soon? Because I full stop asked you, is your deal coming up soon? Because you signed a multi-year deal. Well, you oh. had a little bit of time left from what I understand, but you have re-signed with MLW. Uh, explain that, that process and how that even comes about because it's a fascinating situation in general. Yes, so I can't get into specifics in terms of how much time is left and whatnot, but I did have a little bit more time left on the uh, first ever contract I signed with MLW, and myself and the company both are kind of realizing, oh, this is coming to an end, so let's figure out what we are going to do. So they came up to me, and they kind of were very forward about it, saying, hey, we want to re-sign you. We still want to have you as a part of this ever-growing brand. Continue to, of course, just make the clout couple everything, which we already are, you know? So um, it just just got to the point where I was kind of having offers from different spots and interest and I was kind of thinking what do I do going forward and I just kind of made sense to stay with MLW they've treated me so well I love what I get to do there I love majority of people in the back obviously I have my issues with with some but they already know that and they stay away now so <laughs> uh, it's just it, it, it's always been a good community and I like that I have the freedom to do what I want there in terms of what I say and do so that's always been fantastic because most brands you don't have that freedom and that can get very aggravating so yeah uh, i signed once again with them i'm very excited about it i can't wait to continue to just keep kicking ass there and i can also do all my other projects so whether stuff with the worsties or not fest or a couple of other brands i'm talking to that are very big it's just it allows me to do everything i like so i'm very grateful for that and uh when this got done i was like wow they've retained hammerstone holiday um, Mads Kruger, Jacob Fatu, mm -hmm. yourself, a lot of the names that are seen at the very top of their show every single week have been retained by MLW. Impact Wrestling has been retaining a ton of talent. Uh, Jordan Grace right. among them, Moose, uh, Ace Austin, like a lot, Josh Alexander. A couple of years ago, that wasn't the case for a lot of these companies when WWE was paying like to get anybody they could. AEW was trying to fill out their roster. There was a whole lot of change going on in pro wrestling, and it seemed yeah. like there was more movement than staying. How has that been for you and what you do? Because what you do now has changed significantly than just a couple of years ago. For me, it's interesting because there were a couple of names that approached me, and there are a lot of people that I know have gone to these brands and they kind of just get lost in the shuffle. So although it's super appealing to sign with a name that people, you know, instantly gravitate towards and stuff like that, um, it, it also, you have to realize when it comes down to business, you might not be used at all. Like you can be getting a pretty paycheck, but you could just be sitting in the back and I want to be on screen. I want to be on every single week doing what I love. So that was kind of the biggest deciding factor for me. But the fact that places are locking down other people, I mean, obviously I do the interviews as well, not just now talking on the mic and accompanying my man to the ring and everything. Like there's a lot more that goes on. So uh, the fact that these companies aren't just getting, or these wrestlers rather, aren't just getting locked down to WWE or AEW, which can be slightly trickier to get interviews with. Like they're a lot harder than yes. just, oh, hey, want to do something at 4 p.m. tomorrow? I, I love that because then I can just hit up my buddies and we don't have to go through any BS. So for me, it's great. <laughs> um, and at the same time, you know, I I'm down for whoever gets their opportunities wherever. People have heard me complain about some of the hurdles in getting interviews. What hurdles yeah. have you faced? PR departments, people are like, oh, well, that makes it easier. It doesn't always make it easier. If you have a positive relationship yeah. with them, it does sometimes. Absolutely. I think the thing for me that's most aggravating is I'll have buddies who straight up are like, oh, my gosh, yes, let's lock this interview down. And then once we're about to do it, 
their PR people get a word and they're like, oh yeah, you have to run it through us. I'm like, okay, well, here you go. And then you either don't hear back or it takes forever to line it up. Meanwhile, you could just call up your friend and be like, oh, cool, interview time now, sweet. So that that's always been so aggravating. It's such a kind of unnecessary step in certain degrees and certain scenarios. So I, you know, I much prefer to just kind of scrap that and go straight to people because I've never had, had any issues that way, but you know, I understand why they're in place completely and we gotta, we gotta work around them. And usually it does work out, which I'm, I'm always happy about. There were a couple of situations that, that stick out in my mind. I had one that was supposed to go through a PR department and they're like, no, I'm an independent contractor. I'll do what I want. And if they want to complain about it, then I'm going to remind them what I am. And then another right. one, the person sent me the email where um, the PR guy said, hey, Sean's asking for an interview. I can let him know you're busy if you want. And they're like, I'm not busy. I asked him to do this interview. <laughs> that's so, and that's the, that's the problem. I find like that's the mindset. And I'm not saying every publicist is like that because I've worked with so many incredible ones between yes. music and wrestling. There are some that just want to get so much press for their people. And I love that because that should be the job. But then there are some people who are like, oh, cool. I don't have to line this up. I don't have to sit on the Zoom call for 10 minutes and listen. Let's just make my life easier. And I can't stand that because, you know, me, I'm all about the hustle. I'm all about getting out there and doing things as are you. And I respect that so much. So when I see someone who just tries so hard to uh, get out of that, I can't understand it. I, I And it, 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 yeah. it hurts us too. It hurts us too, which is the most aggravating part. I, I have found, and I, and I hate traveling, but I found that traveling helps a lot when you get FaceTime with these PR people and with the publicists yes. and stuff like that. And they see that you're a living, breathing, functioning human being out in public. That helps a lot too. Yeah. Um, so MLW has been wonderful for you by the looks of it. I mean, you, you have... Anybody that, that saw your interviews before knew that you would eventually step into performing beyond just the interviews. Do you remember how that was presented to you? Did you present it to them? How does that even come about? One time, Court and I were just on a phone call, kind of checking in on a few things. And I told him, you know, I, I love the interviewing so much. And I, I always enjoy talking to people behind the scenes, but I know that I can offer a lot more to the company. And I know that we can shock a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's all I said. And he was like, oh, cool. We'll definitely circle back on it. And that's all that was said that day. And then, you know, I think it was probably eight months later, uh, they kind of said, hey, this is something that uh, we think would be really fun. You guys are together. Why not just bring that real life aspect and put it into MLW? And I thought, oh my gosh, I get to work with Richard Moore. Amazing. We get to stir stuff up. And I also knew I had more to show. I genuinely was really tired of just listening to other people talk. And that's going to sound douchey, but I don't give a shit. Like, I was so tired of hearing everybody else get mic time when I knew that I could really deliver on that aspect. So once they gave me the opportunity and they're going to give me even more going forward, I'm so hyped about, uh, I just, I knew I could just run with it and really show people. I'm not just going to stand there and hold a mic. I can actually be a part of this show and a very important part. So you all were planting seeds like October, November, very, very early on. Yeah. So I yep. assume that that conversation <laughs> happened well before, like probably a bit before that even so before it, it even ended up with you with Richard like there, there were months to go before that and then there were probably eight months before that you just said that you had pitched it so this was a, a long road from you saying I want to do this yeah, I think it was also because at the time the interviews were doing so well those segments when they'd air a lot of people in the chat because I go in there sometimes just to see what's up. I like know I'm, I'm a very analytical person. So I like knowing what works and what people like. Yeah. And so seeing any time that I'd come up or have an interview, people got hyped about it. That had me so excited. And I realized, oh, okay, they like when I'm on the screen. That's a good sign. And so from seeing that for so long during those in-between months, I think the brand saw it too. And it takes, it takes a lot to put an, an interviewer um, on, on every poster to push them that much and have faith that people are going to care. And luckily, uh, whether they love to hate me or hate to love me, you know, it's working. And I'm super, super happy about that. What things have you found are the easiest for you to kind of heal an audience with or maybe the most challenging? Because obviously you have a few tricks up your sleeve. You've seen tons of people do it firsthand. For me, I think it's just channeling how I would love to be in my 
every day life and turning yes. that to 11. You know, I'm being completely honest. There's so many times someone will cut me off in a grocery store and I've kind of started saying things now because I just don't care. But um, you, you want to say like, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you being a douchebag? Blah, blah, blah. And when you are in that ring and you're in front of that audience, the MLW fans, I'll look at someone and I can literally just read them now. I can say that to you that's in my mind, whether they look like some hillbilly when we're in Dallas or wherever we may be. I can say that and I can throw up middle fingers and I can really just be Alicia too, but completely cranked to 11. And uh, being able to spinal tap this stuff has been exhilarating. I, I love that. It's very cathartic. It is so yes. nice. Like, like whenever Therapy. you see, whenever you see <laughs> dumb shit that people say on Twitter and you're like, ah, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, because before everyone was like, oh, she's so sweet. She's so innocent. And it's because I never really had the balls to say exactly what I was thinking. And yeah. then something in my life happened where everything was about a year ago. Everything was kind of recalibrated. And I realized I'm taking no one's BS anymore. I'm not just going to sit there quietly. I'm just going to really let myself shine completely. And that's what MLW has allowed me to do. And for that, I'm super grateful to both Court and MSL for everything behind the scenes, but also myself. I've grown a lot within the last couple of years and being able to showcase that uh, not only online and to friends and family, but on television, like it's been wild. <laughs> I, I've found that if people know that one person gets an inch, everybody else takes a mile. Like that's how it always, always goes. And if you don't keep the certain people in check, then everybody's just gonna try to take advantage of you, and uh, I, I love seeing this this edge of you, this 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 Thanks. part of you come out on on television because it's it's working exceptionally well. Do you what, like what kind of feedback have you gotten from people backstage? Because you've had relationships with these people for a very long time, and now they're seeing a different side of you. Well, the moment that everything happened where I turned on Hammer, however all the marks want to say it, you know, the moment that that happened, I felt incredible walking back through that curtain. I had Richard wrapped around me. Like, it was just such a good moment. We felt like we really made our statement. And I had everybody coming up to me from Alex Kane, EJ and Duca, Emilio in the back. Like, all the boys are like, what just happened? We did not expect that. Like they had no clue what was about to go down, but they did know my frustrations in everything going on within the dynasty and, and MLW and how I really wanted my voice to be heard more. So I think they were shocked, but they were also kind of proud because I have, I have incredible relationships with a lot of the guys in the back. And the thing is, even though people are seeing a new side of me, I won't treat you terribly unless you've crossed me so you know i'm not just gonna walk up to someone and slap them across the face unless they deserve it so yeah. it's kind of that new dynamic where uh they were really proud and, and hyped but they were also very confused and thinking wow okay so this is this is happening going forward all right it kind of shook up the locker room and for you to get offered and sign a new contract after this big switch that has to that has to just shoot your confidence through the roof because that means they like what you're doing. They, they you're, it's good and they, they want more of it. So, I mean, after years of doing, I don't want to say the same thing because you did a lot of different things, but, right. uh, but years of being the interview queen, now you're, you're performing every single week on TV and they're like, yeah, we want more of that. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Damn awesome. Feels great. <laughs> you know, it's so different. It's a complete 180 and seeing that the reaction has been good, no matter uh, if they're booing, they're cheering, they're screaming your name once you walk through that curtain, knowing that their reaction is there, that means everything. And it just kind of lights a fire under you even more to go out there and perform to your best every single time and really put on a show while making your mark. So uh, knowing that's working for the fans along with my, the people who hired me and brought me into this brand, I mean, it feels great. It really does. You mentioned that you you don't take issue with someone unless they've crossed you. Selena De La yeah. has crossed you a few times. She has. She definitely has. But I do think the thing with her is that she tried to make things better. Meanwhile, yeah. Hammer's just Hammer's just a dipshit who doesn't know what he's doing. Like he hasn't tried to reconcile at all. He hasn't admitted his mistakes from the past. So there's a big difference there. Plus, with her we've realized how to really make money off one another and deep down we're business women. Listen, like that's what it comes down to you can, so you can get hammerstone some other, sexy lingerie and next no thing you know see that come on no can. even him switching from his jeans to these trunks now like it's just repulsive no one wants to see it wow are you saying that yeah. he looks bad in trunks i didn't say that you just i think you just said that 
So I was I was disappointed when I popped on a live with you and Selena De Laurenti. I just commented something. She also did not know mm-hmm. D twelve, which is of course. But mm-hmm. worsties, tell us about it. Oh man, I mean it's my best worst friend and I just causing havoc and doing crazy embarrassing things playing video games doing really hot photo shoots like we do everything that we want and it's been so empowering it's so much fun and at the end of the day we are just working tirelessly all the time to make our content even better so if you guys like laughing at things if you like pranks skits uh, if you like wrestling stuff we do a lot of in-ring things she's teaching me how to wrestle we have a segment called teach that move where she literally walks me through it all does it to me and i have to reverse it on her it's just it's always a wild time you never know what's going to happen but it's always filled with laughs and a lot of moments where we're just shaking our heads thinking wow okay that just happened so <laughs> if you guys like being entertained that's what the worst these are just your entertainment is there a chance that we see you competing in the in the future? Oh, what's interesting is the more that I'm ringside watching Rich do his thing, the more I'm like, man, can you imagine both of us in there, the clout couple taking bookings and destroying everybody? Like, it's a, it's an exciting thought. But I do know the work that I would have to put into it in order for it to be that level. So I'm not opposed to putting that work in. It's just right now with all the different projects, I'm like, oh, where the hell do I fit in like four hours of wrestling training? <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Of course. But it's not off the table. I used to say never. Now I say you, you never know what's going to happen. And had you worked heel in a performing role before this? I mean, because, I mean, you would do interview stuff, and you never know what, what a promoter might come up and ask you and, and say, oh, mm-hmm. we want you to do this tonight. Is this a first for you? Yeah, I've never had to show this side of myself, nor has anyone given me that kind of that platform yeah. to let this out. So, uh, yeah, that's never happened. Anytime that I would interview some of the larger than life people in wrestling from your from your MJFs to your Rosemary's, uh, I was always on that other side of just innocent. This is kind of freaky, but I would love to tell them to F off. What do I do? So <laughs> now, you know, I can just fully unleash that side of me. And that, that's been amazing. <laughs> do you have a moment that you remember that made you want to act like a heel in an interview? Oh, man, so many. So many. There, there, there are some wonderful people. And then there are some absolute dog shit people that you run into. There really are. Yeah. No, there really are. There was this there was this one band I interviewed and they just were giving me nothing. Like really? nothing. And it was driving me crazy. And they were kind of lesser known too. And I was shocked because I I remember putting in so much time and effort into things and they just were blank. I'm like, do you do treat everyone like this? Or is this just me? Do you have an issue with me? What's the deal? And I was about to go in and I was like, you know what? I can't because we are always in a professional environment and it's music, not wrestling, which is slightly different. Yes. But I remember walking away from that thinking those mofos, like I'm never letting that happen again. And that definitely triggered me. And then there's some people in wrestling too, who are very two faced and malicious and only want to get to the top and they'll befriend you for it or say certain things. And you know, once I start to sniff that out, because we are researchers, we can we can see between the lines. Uh, once you start to realize that, it's game over for them. So there were definitely some moments that made me realize a lot of people suck, and I don't. So let's show them that. <laughs> so as we sort of wrap up, you have interviewed an awful lot of bands, and of course they've they've got incredible performing experience. That that's that second nature for a band. Have you found that they adapt to like the interview aspect? better or worse than that of wrestlers because wrestlers they have to turn it up an awful lot yeah it's interesting i find if you go into an interview with a musician and just talk music they're so bored but if you start talking about their hobbies and and wrestling and a bunch of other things then they love it so i kind of do feel like it always comes down to the person because you can have someone who seems super super exciting and they're super dull in person and vice versa so it really depends on the person but uh i feel like wrestling they're always on so as soon as that camera starts they're ready to go and musicians a lot of the time can be more chill so if i kind of had to choose between the two just for interviewing wrestling for me is where i i have the most fun i feel like i can thrive more but i, I love learning about music and musicians so it's, it's difficult <laughs> But you guys are going to have fun at MLW. They're in Philly, May 13th, New York City, June 23rd, Chicago, July oh, yeah. 16th, with the with the newly signed, re-signed Alicia Atut. Alicia, I want to thank you so much. This was so much more pleasant than our last interview. Well, this time you were a lot less annoying, Sean, so thank you so, so much. <sighs> Listen, Alicia, I don't build bullshit. You better ask around, because Fightful throws the bombest bash in town. 
And I'm sure you stop. know exactly what that's about. I do. I just, just, just stop. I think it's, I think this is time where we call this, call this and end to the interview. Until next time, guys, we're out. Hey guys, this interview brought to you for the price of on the house by nordvpn.com slash fightful. Check out nordvpn.com slash fightful to check all your region blocked shows, get pay-per-views, maybe a little bit more affordably than usual, avoid price discrimination, browse securely, all that good stuff. You can also use the code fightful. You'll save 70% off plus get one additional month for free. And it's all backed with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, just let them know you get your money back. There's no risk, and this investment is going to save you money as well, if you so choose. I often find that when I'm traveling, there's certain shows that I can't watch because it says I'm not in my home area. NordVPN.com slash Fightful takes care of that. Reminder, use that code Fightful if you want. Hit them up at NordVPN on Twitter and enjoy the interview.